Hey YouTube, Peterbilt Knife Guy. And today, I did something I thought I would never do. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> that is right. I got a Mora, <laughs> what is this, the Garberg. Yeah, Mora Garberg. Now, if you watch my channel for any period of time, you've noticed I've been fighting with the, uh, <laughs> with the people who just love Mora. Um, basically because this is how it all went down. If you've, uh, if you watch my, if you watch my, uh, shorts, you will notice that, uh, I posted a video of this. This is the Benchmade Puko 200 in CPM 3V. Excuse my dirty hands. I got some great stuff on there. Stupid expanding foam. Uh, <laughs> and on my shorts where I posted this, not even mentioning Mora, these Mora fanboys, and you know, and if you're a Mora fanboy, great, that's that's fine, I get it. Moras are cool knives. Uh, just were like, oh, you should have bought a Mora. Oh, you should have bought a Mora. Oh, Benchmade's overpriced. Should have bought a Mora. You know, I understand when you uh, when you open yourself up to the internet, you just allow all kinds of retard in your uh, life. But uh, I still am not going to sit around and take it. So, <laughs> so I've been fighting with them. But anyways. I did a couple shorts where I did uh, this guy or this guy. Which would you choose? You know, it's crazy because the video got crazy views and crazy likes. Uh, but yet all the comments were like, oh, Mora. Mora all day. I'd rather have 10 Moros than one of these. BS. I call absolute BS on that. But <laughs> that brings us to this guy. This is the Mora Garberg. It's a full tang carbon steel version of a more knife and this was a hate purchase for me this was a purchase to see uh you know what what an expensive mora is because all my moras have been the uh the 15 20 variety like this mora companion or whatever it is and this is the uh stainless model by the way uh you know and more's great knives nothing against mora except the mora tards those guys make me mad. <laughs> but yeah, that's how this guy came into uh, play. It was a hate purchase. And I had a gift card, so I didn't have to buy it full price, which was fantastic. Because these things are 80 freaking bucks. So let's get into this. Here's your uh, whatever it says right there. <laughs> Carbon steel. It's uh, 0.34 inches long, 9 inches overall. 0.13 uh, inches thick. It's a pretty thick blade, actually. Uh, 7.4 ounces. Use with a fire st starter. Uh, you know, they're talking about a ferro rod. Like, you know, another thing was, too, is the, the Benchmade Puko doesn't have a 90-degree spine, so it can't strike a fire. Whatever. I mean, seriously, how many bushcrafters are there? on youtube you guys are out there starting freaking fires with a with a with a flint or a uh oh what is it called a ferrocium rod every weekend give me a break you guys are shack wagons <laughs> bunch of freaking uh bunch of keyboard warriors is what they are and it's a full tang so yeah let's get into this guy so i already said the specs the box does a pretty good rep representation of what you get in the, in there um there's different options when you buy these. You can buy these with different sheath, sheath options. I chose the cheapest one because basically I just wanted a freaking knife. But they make them with a with a fire steel holder. And uh, I think there's a couple different carry options. There's different prices. Basically, you get the same knife, different sheaths. And these do come in stainless steel. I believe it's 14C28 or 14. I don't know. I'll put it in here. And this is the carbon steel version and right on uh Moore's website it's hard to find out what carbon steel they use because even in some of their stuff they say they use recycled steel what the heck is recycled steel <laughs> how can you trust the steel you get on a knife when it's recycled i don't get it but uh the closest thing i could find out about the steel on this is it's basically kind of comparable to 1095 now from first glance it's done well, you know, the blade is done well. There is very, very sharp 90 degree spines on there. Uh, the way the tip is configured, it's a very strong tip. Of course, you got your standard uh, Scandinavian grind on here, which is, you know, great for woodworking, but that's where it kind of ends. It's it's not a uh, 
universal grind. You know, it's that was another thing is like, oh, I'd rather have this. Well, I mean, it's like if you're in the woods, 99 percent of the stuff you're doing with your knife is probably not going to be wood. You know, um, you're going to be cutting up game or fishing or I don't know, doing whatever, making food for dinner or breakfast. You're not going to need a, a grind that's just straight up does its best in wood. You know, there's a lot of people. If you don't believe me, go check it out. Um, the Scandinavian grind, it, it, it shines in wood. I will give it that. This thing will outcarve this thing, hands down. But that's basically where, you know, it, it shines and it falls short. Um, unlike a typical Mora, where it is just a sharpened blade stuffed into a uh, overmolded handle, and it's sharp all the way back there, this one does have a... Uh, a little flat spot here. There's no sharpening choil. I really wish they would have put a sharpening choil on here. I don't see why you wouldn't put a sharpening choil on here. There's room for it. They could have ground that out a little bit. Whatever. What do I know? I'm not an engineer. Um, full tang. And this thing is extremely sharp. And you could definitely probably strike a ferrocium rod with just the handle. Let's try it out. Absolutely. Burn my mat. So yeah, you can use the handle. You can use the back of the blade or the spine. Absolutely. You can throw sparks. I mean, it's to be expected. Uh, let's see. Does this Mora? See, here's the carbon or the uh, stainless one. This is what everybody loves. They love their companions. Mora companion is not going to strike a freaking fire rod. So, you know, when I was saying it against this, you know, they're whatever. These guys just... You know, it's, it's funny because I'm kind of complaining right now. And I know none of these guys who watch my shorts are probably going to watch my video. So, whatever. <laughs> if you're interested in the whole situation, go watch my shorts on the freaking, uh, on this guy. And read the comments. It is hilarious. Um, another thing, too. This thing came stupid dull out of the freaking box. It was sharpened. And it had a secondary freaking bevel on there. There was a secondary bevel on here. You know, they talk about the Scandinavian grind. Oh, it's a full flat all the way down. No, this thing came with a secondary bevel on there. And it wasn't even that sharp. It wouldn't even pull hair. I had to strop the living crap out of it. It's deadly sharp now. But I had to sharpen it. I had to uh, strop it. And you can see this is a DLC coating on here, which is diamond light coating. I had to strop it so hard. First off, there was a nick. Let's see if he can even show up. Uh, there still is kind of a nick. There's a shiny spot. It's not going to show up on camera. It's right, right around there somewhere. Basically where I wore the DLC off, trying to strop it out. Um, which brings me to this coating, this diamond light coating. It's not going to be super strong. It, it, it almost seems like it's a bluing. There's colors to it. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. But it's supposed to be a DLC coated blade. I don't know how true that is. Um, yeah, yeah. The, you know, <laughs> like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a hate purchase. Um, I really wanted to see, you know, I, I get it. These things are cool. These things are cool for 15 and 20 bucks, but that's where they end. That's where the coolness ends. They're good functional knives for extremely cheap. I wanted to see what a not so cheap version of Mora was. And let me tell you, I'm less than impressed. Is it a functional knife? Yes. But it, that that's kind of, you know, where it kind of sucks. This sheath is freaking, it's functional. That's, that's its only mark. It's functional. Oh, but it's got drain holes because that doesn't happen on any other brands. Man, give me a break. <laughs> the stupid loop thing just kind of pops off. So, I mean, like if you sit down, let's just say you sit down, you hit something hard and you can hit it literally hard enough to where your knife could come out or loosen up and then you go running or something and, and it could pop out. I could see this popping out of the sheath. That is uh, not a good thing in my opinion. Uh, what else we got on here? I do not know what these are for. I think these are for the other sheath options. This loop, it seems like it's leather. Very machine manufactured leather. I'm not positive, but uh, yeah. Sheath. It holds the knife. Let's get to the knife. The blade is done extremely well. I'll give it that. They should have spent more time sharpening it for their, you know, top dollar knife. 
but this handle you are paying eighty dollars people complain about this one they're like oh this is overpriced get a mora you know oh it's just a rubber handle yeah it does have a rubber handle and it's extremely comfortable because it's rubberized it's a super hard rubber but it's got texture not just the texture here but the rubber texture it has has grip to it um to where this guy you're just getting a piece of plastic over molded onto a knife and another thing they said too this one's too heavy <laughs> these are about and this one's just slightly heavier but this guy this guy's definitely heavier this dense plastic that they use on this handle is extremely heavy for what it is it feels like a chunky knife in hand but it's a mora i mean if you compare these two there's just night and day um it's definitely a more robust knife but uh is it worth 80 bucks now <sighs> that's extremely up to whoever buys it like i said this is a hate purchase for me and i didn't pay 80 bucks for it so for me, if I was, a, <laughs> I've known about this knife for a long time and I never pulled the trigger because I just, the way I see Mora's, that I see them as a throwaway knife and not a throwaway knife because they're garbage, but a knife to where you can afford to lose it. You can afford to break it. You don't care if you break it. You buy four of them. You go camping for it four days. You come back with none of them because apparently lo people lose their knives all the time. That was another comment they had, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't see it. I see a good quality knife, maybe 60 bucks tops. I do not see $80 here. And the $80 was the cheap one with the cheap sheath. They do make a more, you know, they do have a more expensive sheath option, which costs you more money. So I don't know. This handle, no give, no comfort. I would be supremely curious to know how it feels when you're uh, batoning, if it's going to transfer shock because there's just no give to it. Um, I'm actually really honestly curious about that. If it wasn't dark right now, I would try it out. But yeah, that is the Mora Garberg in all its glory. Good knife, not for the price, but uh, we're going to test it out. I mean, I have no doubt it's strong. I have zero doubt it's strong, but I still want to try it. You know, maybe I'll love it. It's happened before. It happened with the, uh, oh, what was that? The... The Becker BK9. Hated that knife. Bought it. Love that knife. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe this will be on uh, 2024's top 10 or top 5 list of Peterbilt Knife Guys' favorite knives. To be determined. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.